every time you lift up an altar, God creates a nation inside of you. And so when you are fighting, you are not fighting alone. You are fighting as a nation. And so what he did there, the Bible says he divided his forces. There were 319 nations. Awake, arise, in time bride, women of fire. You have been called to advance and to establish the frontiers of the kingdom of our God and of his Christ now. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. The end time bride is a center of incubation where weak ladies encounter the spirit of burning and are forged into women of power and grace who are ready to set their world on fire for Jesus. Arise and shine, O end time bride. Your time is now. Please be seated in heavenly places. This weekend we activate the himself. God now the Bible the says that Abraham was a nation. And so he, he ended up dividing himself so 319 times. And so great. there were 319 Raya nations vehicle, fighting against the people that had taken Sodom and I'm Gomorrah. That so that stands to reason that every time you lift up an altar, God creates a nation inside of you. And so when you are fighting, you are not fighting alone. You are fighting as a nation and so what he did there the bible says he divided his forces there were 319 luke nations 2, 42 to 43. luke chapter 2 verse 42 and when he was 12 years old they went up to jerusalem according to the custom of the feast when they had finished the days as they returned the boy jesus lingered behind in jerusalem and Joseph and his mother did not know it. The boy Jesus lingered behind. And they continued on the journey. And they did not know that Jesus was missing. So that stands to reason that you can be on a journey and think you started off with God. But if you don't check in every so often, you can leave Jesus behind. If you don't walk with Jesus, you can leave him behind. You can start ministry with Jesus and along the way, leave him behind. You can start the whole relationship with Jesus. Eventually, if you don't check in, you can leave him behind. This weekend, we're not leaving Jesus behind. And I want you to catch this revelation in your heart, in your spirit, in your mind. So anytime you get out of the spirit and enter into the flesh, you go back and you go and get Jesus. Anytime you think that you are doing something, you must learn how to check in with Jesus. I've learned this principle that I don't preach Unless Jesus is going with me. And if you're not careful, you will go and give words that God did not send you to give. You will enter into relationships and jobs and businesses and, and degrees. And God will not be with you along the journey. This weekend... One of your prayers is that, Lord, you must be with me along this four-day journey. Nothing should get me upset. Nothing should make me take offense. This weekend, I'm going on this journey with you. I will be in the spirit all four days. I cannot afford to leave you behind. Because you know what they had to do? Continue reading. Verse 44. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So they went a whole day, thought that Jesus was with them, only to find out he wasn't. This weekend, you are walking side by side with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Nothing is taking you out of the Spirit. And they had to go back 
and get him. But unfortunately, once today is over, it's over. There's no going back. And so whatever you must take, take it this weekend. Every word, hear it as a prophetic word. Everything that the Lord shows you in your mind's eye, every scripture he drops, every word he highlights to you. Jesus along the way. That's how we move in this, this week. Today my assignment is very simple. If we're going to be praying the rest of the days, you must understand why you are here in the first place. Remember, I could have just entered into a place of prayer. But the Lord said that no, they must understand why they are here. So when they come to pray, there's no second guessing. And so today my sermon is titled, The Premise of the Altar. The foundation of this altar that you guys hear about all the time. Every man and woman of God preaches about altars. Because why? It is so important. You must understand that things are birthed out of the spirit before we even see it. Nothing happened to you. By the time you fell on the floor here, it already happened in the realms of the spirit. Before you can get the denial, before you can get the proposal, before you can start the, before anything, before the sickness hit, it started in the realms of the spirit. So until you realize that this life is highly spiritual, you will always take everything face value. Nothing happens just by mistake. It must first happen in the spirit. We are not physical beings, but we are spiritual. Before anything can manifest, you must know that it happened already in the realms of the spirit. And so, as children of God, we have a responsibility to desire the things of the spirit so that the spirit does not get ahead of us too much. And one of the first things that happens when the enemy knows that you have no knowledge of the spirit is laziness. Laziness in a place of prayer. Laziness when it comes to the things of God. You can be fine. Everything is okay. The minute the word is coming. The minute it's time to open up your word. A heaviness comes upon you. And if you are not highly sensitive and highly spiritual, you will not know that there is literally a spirit closing your eyes. If we were to see some things, we would begin to loose and bind at all times. And so today the Lord said that teach them the premise of the altar. So that tomorrow, when they lift up their hands in deliverance, it can be in totality. You see, when we hold these type of programs, it is not by mistake. If you don't know, you have two praying people. And so when we carry these type of programs out, we're not doing it to satisfy our flesh that we can join people together. We are doing it because we were shown in the realms of the spirit. And this weekend, I saw people getting delivered. Mass deliverance. I saw people testifying that their deliverance has been made whole. I saw it myself. I saw supernatural testimonies being birthed this weekend. And so in the physical, I must pray it down. So I asked God, how do I 
effectively communicate that this is the hour of their visitation? How do I effectively communicate that this weekend, don't take it for granted? And he said, do it through the altar. See, today you will be strengthened. John 4, 24 says that God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so when we talk about certain things, you must know that because God is a spirit, the spirit always precedes the physical. And so if he's shown us deliverance in the spirit, that means in the physical, you must now begin to place a demand for your deliverance. Some of you carry chronic headaches and you think it's normal. Not knowing that there is literally a demon that squeezes your head every single time. And you think it's a, a matter of light? They lied to you and told you that you got to make sure you dim the lights? Where in the Bible did someone have a headache? You must place emphasis on the word of God. That's why we do these type of programs. So you can have a deep emphasis on the word of God. And so God is a spirit. Today I want to talk to you about, again, the foundation of the altar. Many of us don't have an, a, a true understanding of it. But if you don't know, you being here today, you are raising an altar. You don't understand. These programs, what an altar is essentially is you communicating with God at a specific time, date, and you are hearing the voice of God. And so every year when you come to prayer fest, you are raising an altar concerning every topic that we are praying about. And so all these years, you are a part of the number. That was the first one. And so you raise an altar that, Lord, whatever you are doing in this generation, I must be a part of that number. And so this year, if he's given out kingdom influence, if he's taking people off, you are raising certain altars that whatever shuts down your greatness, Whatever does not allow the people in your home to arise, you are lifting up an altar this weekend and you are saying that I break every altar of delay, I break every altar of, of ungreatness, I break every altar of mediocrity in my life. And I break it for generations. Anytime you come, Anytime you, you are in such an environment, kingdom camp is an altar that is raised. The 21-day marriage fast, that is another altar. See, you are lifting up altars and you don't even know. But today you must gain an understanding. I want us to turn to Genesis 3, um, Genesis 13, 1 to 4. Genesis 13, verse 1. No, Genesis 12. Let's start there. 1 to 7. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions, and they had gathered, that they had gathered, 
and the people whom they had acquired in Haran. And they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the terebinth tree of Moreh. And the Canaanites were then in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. Amen. So Abraham understood the mystery of the altar. He understood that every time God spoke to me, I should erect an altar right there. And so if God speaks to me in my bathroom, right then and there, I begin to commune with God. And I begin to place a demand right there in the bathroom. And I now am erecting an altar in my bathroom. And so when you enter my bathroom, you may not know what is happening, but you can feel the presence of God. And so Abraham understood that every time God spoke, let me go place something on the altar. Every time God spoke, let me erect an altar. When you are carnal, you don't know these things. Abraham understood the power of the altar. Verse 8. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So anytime he moved somewhere, he erected an altar. So anytime God spoke and anytime he moved, he erected an altar. So anytime I get a new apartment, a new house, a new condo, I should be able to anoint the place and begin to erect the altar of prayer there. That whatever spirits are there must banish. Because I don't have time to be tormented in my new place. And so Abraham understood this. That anytime God speaks to me, I erect an altar. I begin right then and there to pray, to sing, to sacrifice something. And so he did this. Now I want us to go to Genesis 13, 1 to 4. Genesis 13, 1. Then Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and lot with him to the south. Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai. To the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Amen. So Abraham had went to Egypt. May you not have to go back to Egypt because you are in need of a job. May you not have to go back to the demonic ex of yours because you feel lonely. May you not have to go to that rubbish job that you left that God took you out of in the first place. May you not have to visit your vomit like a dog because you are in need. Abraham had to go back. May you not visit that old sin after this weekend. May that addiction not come back your way. But in fact, may you return back to the altar that you raised initially. And so the Bible says that he went back to the first place. And so some of you have erected an altar here at church. Because this is where we pray all the time. And so an altar has been erected. Anytime you need power, you know that this is my altar. During the pandemic, there was a particular spot that Apostle and I prayed in the whole pandemic. And, and we were on Facebook and YouTube with you guys. And one day I had a dream that some people were coming to, to come and try to harm us. And as soon as they got to that particular spot, they melted and they died. When you lift up an altar, even the spirits understand.
You must learn this mystery of the altar very quickly. Abraham understood this. And so he built a personal altar and then he built a family altar. You can't lead your family without an altar. I'm not to get ahead of myself. Genesis 13, 16 to 18. Did we read that? And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Then Abram moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and built an altar there. And he built a what? Altar. So he moved again. When God gave him the new job, he erected an altar at the job in his cubicle. When God gave him a marriage, he erected an altar at this bedroom. So he carried the understanding of the altar. He knew that this place, if I am here, the power of God will touch me. See, sometimes we get so religious, and yes, God is everywhere, but there's a particular place, a particular song, that when you hear, you yourself, you begin to just become another man. There's a particular scripture that when you hear, it's like fire shut up in your bones. There's a particular preacher when you hear, you know that an altar has been raised. And so an altar is a time and place you have set worship and you grow in your relations with God. So missing church you are not servicing your altar. You see, everything is mimicked in the realms of the spirit. And so the enemy, those occultic people, they know anytime somebody comes to them and they need power, they always see it in the movies all the time. They always say, go and bring a baby, go bring a blood, go bring, go, go bring, because you must service the altar. You don't leave the altar bare. You service it at all times. And so every day, the altar in my bedroom must hear me speaking to God. Some of you, you unknowingly erected an altar in your shower. That is where God speaks to you the most. And so for some reason, no matter what you are doing, what you are going through, when you go to the rest room, and so Abraham builds a personal altar and a family altar simultaneously. He establishes a connection between personal altar and personal prayer life with God. Some of you unknowingly, your altar, now that you know, is your car. Every time you are there, you don't know what is coming over you, but you have built a connection in that car. You are building altars. You must understand this because I'll show you in the scriptures where a king, the Israelites, were sent to go and kill the people of Ammon. They went. They were sent by God. Do you know what the king did? He serviced the altar with his firstborn son. He serviced the altar. He knew that the Israelites would finish them. And so he tapped into the realms of the spirit and said that, let me service this altar with the most precious thing to me, my, fir my first son's blood. And immediately, the wrath of God turned 
against the Israelites. Talk about power versus power. The Israelites went just, just to go. But this king understood the power of the altar. He understood the premise of the altar. That when there is an altar, I must service it. So it's not that we want your money. It's that you are servicing your altar when you come. You are tapping in. You are engaging. This is where your breakthrough, when you hear the word of the Lord, it consumes you. Personal communion. Every time he heard a word, he would go and connect it. And so this weekend, when the prophetic word enters you, you find your altar, be it in, 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 in your bathroom, in your car. When we leave here, you continue to raise that altar. This weekend, you must establish altars everywhere. When you come here, you know that this particular place, when I stand to pray, God visits me. God is everywhere. And so we can raise altars everywhere. Every time I enter a particular grocery store, I'm like, Lord, I remember the first time I entered this place. And today I'm communing with you that every time I come to this place, you must speak to me. Raise altars everywhere you go. Every single place you go to, raise an altar. See, this is why 1 Timothy 1.18, it says, My son Timothy, wage a good warfare. What he was saying is, once the prophetic word comes, I need you to begin to get somewhere and connect yourself with the word by raising an altar. Give God back his word. And so every time I read my word in my bedroom and I've connected with the word, now I go on my knees and I begin to pull down heaven that you must continually speak to me. You must answer me. You are asking the Holy Spirit to speak to you every time. And so when you raise altars in your home, when that spirit of confusion comes, all you got to go is back into your closet and command the atmosphere to be conducive for a peaceful marriage. Those of you who are in your dorms, create an altar there. That is where you do worship. So anyone who enters there with an agenda to sleep with you, to smoke, to kill you, right then and there, they must fall for thy sake. Some of you, the enemy knows this principle. And so he has erected altars that trigger you. And so every time you enter a particular place, oh, it has triggered me to depression. The devil is a liar. Power versus power. When you feel like that, when you enter a place and you feel uncomfortable, that means an altar has been raised against you to trigger you. And you begin to... You must begin to command some things. Abraham understood the power of the altar. And so Genesis, before I get there, just know that Abraham was a regular man like you and I. His father died. His brother died. He ended up having to take care of his nephew. He was a normal man like you and I. Wasn't he? But he understood the power of the altar. And he became the father of faith. And so anything God wanted us to learn, we can learn through Abraham as well too. And so if Abraham was going around erecting altars, every time he would hear God, he would be moved in a new position, he would lift up an, offer, an, an altar of sacrifice, that means we too. We must learn these principles. And so, 
we read now of his nephew who is opposite him. Genesis 14. Remember, his brother had died. Abraham's brother died. His name was Haran. But he had a son called Lot. And Lot now became his issue. We can read. Genesis 14 verse 1. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Arioch, king of Elisar, Chador, Lamer, king of Elam, and Tadal, king of nations, that they made war with Bera, king of Sodom, Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, Shem Eber, king of Zeboim, and king of Bela, Just that keep is following. Zor. All these joined together in the valley of Siddim, that is the Salt Sea. Twelve years they served Chedolomer, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. In the fourteenth year, Chedolomer and the kings that were with him came and attacked Ratham in Ashtaroth, Kernem, the Zuzim in Ham, the Emim in Shave, Kir. Reathum. And the Horites in their mountain of Sir, as far as El Paran, which is by the wilderness. Then they turned back and came to En Mishpat, that is Kadesh, and attacked all the country of the Amalekites and also the Amorites who dwelt in the Hazazon Tamar. And the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adma, the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is Zor, went out and joined together in battle in the valley of Sedim. Against Shadolomer, king of Elam, Tadal, king of nations, Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Arioch, king of Elisar, four kings against five. Now the valley of Sedim was full of asphalt pits, and the king of Sodom and Gomorrah fled. Some fell there, and the remainder fled to the mountains. Then they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their provisions and went their way. They also took Lot, Abraham's, Abraham's brother, son who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods and departed. Amen. Before Amen. we continue. I made us read all of that so you can understand that there was a journey that went on. So when we read the story of Abraham, he was told to leave his father's house and he would become the father of many nations. And so he adhered to it. And upon him leaving, he had his, his nephew with him locked. And the Bible says that he was creating altars all over the place. When you read chapter 13, you realize that Abraham had grew in property. He grew. So those who pray and those who raise altars are not just poor people. We, we have an understanding that only uh, uh, people who are poor pray a lot. Abraham was wealthy. He was super wealthy to the point that he could take care of his, son, his nephew. And he had his wife and he had a whole bunch of herdsmen with him. And so the Bible says in the 13, in chapter 13, that there was an issue that went on between the herdsmen, Abraham herdsmen and Lot's herdsmen. And when the, the issue got to Abraham and Lot, the disrespectful nephew, decided to try to get loud, Abraham was a peacemaker. See, when you rest in the promises of God, you don't have time for contention. When you understand, when you raise altars and you communicate with God and God communicates with you while other people are moving back and forth and being busybodies, you are cool as a cucumber. And so Abraham was cool. And so he told Lot, listen, you can take the left or you can take the right. Whichever one you want, it's fine. And I'll go the opposite way just so we don't end up fighting. He was a man of peace. 
See, when you raise altars, you hear God. When you hear God, you become a man of peace. When you don't hear from heaven, that is when you are anxious, mad, upset, easily offended. But Abraham understood this. And so he said, you go your way, I go my way. And he took, he took to Sodom. And Abraham went the opposite way. And Abraham's life was good, much like many of us. And then that annoying little brother, annoying little sister, annoying nephew, that annoying auntie came with their issues again. And so Lot went to a place where he shouldn't have gone. He went to Sodom. And Sodom was the modern day America. Transgenders and all. Three bathrooms and teaching kids that drag queens can, can read books to you. Modern day uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. And so the Bible says that an issue occurred where the kings, that's what our sister was just reading, where the kings all gathered up and they began to say, let us take over this land. And so Lot, again, was in an issue. And someone who knew that he was related to Abraham went to Abraham and said, listen, your family member was just captured. Now you need to go save him. May the Lord continue to give you strength to save them. Because it's not an easy job to be the sent one in your family. And so a family member told, somebody told him that your family member is being taken captive. And so the Bible here says that the kings went and, and took everybody that was in Sodom, including Lot. Now, if you would have read in the previous chapters, Lot was so disrespectful and all he cared about was his property. He was so self-centered that even when his, his father, his standing father was lifting up altars, he never cared about that. All he cared about was his possessions. To the point that he did not realize that the only reason why he was blessed was because of Abraham. Don't be so carnal that you miss it. When God gives you a leader that is good, that is integral. Watch what they do and follow them as they follow Christ. Don't try to do your own thing. Because that's how you get kidnapped. And so in, in this scripture, we see that Lot was kidnapped. Continue reading. Verse 13. Then one who had escaped came and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshcol and brother of Anner. And they were allies with Abram. Now when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his 318 trained servants who were born in his own house. And so Abraham was not poor. Let's get it right. Prayer warriors, if you are poor, you choose to be poor. But not every prayer warrior is poor. Abraham was, he was the man. 318 servants. And this is just the men. And I'm sure everyone had their wife and their children. So that's triple the amount that we, we read about. So don't be, don't be mistaken or don't be fooled by the voices of men or the voices of Satan that coming to church too much means that you are poor. Remember, in this life, we have three voices, the voices of God, voice of men, and voice of Satan. When you don't carry that altar relationship, you end up hearing the voices of men and the voices of Satan. And that is why some of you go through spiritual turmoil. Every day you are in and out because you are listening to your family members that say you come to church too much. The devil is a liar. Listen, the new rule of thumb, whoever talks about you and your Christianity, watch their life. 
if it is nothing that you want replicated, you say, sit down and I'd rather go to the prayer warrior who is moving and shaking things. Forget about you. We silence those voices today. Don't be allowing people to carry influence over you so much that when God has spoken to you to do something, continue. Verse 14. His 318 trained servants who were born in his own house and went in pursuit as far as Dan. He divided his forces against them by night. And he and his servants attacked them and pursued them as far as Hobah, which is north of Damascus. So he brought back all the goods and also brought back his brother Lot and his goods as well as the woman and the people. Verse 15 says that he divided... See, Abraham understood the power of the altar. That every time I erect an altar, I am essentially gaining power from God. You become a nation. Continue. Verse 17. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shaveh. That is the king's valley. After his return from the defeat of Chedolomer and the kings who were with him. Verse 18. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God Most High. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. Now the How king is it that he is the one who has brought the people he is the one that people should be honoring. But he understood the power of the tithe. He understood the power of the tenth. And so he understood that let me bless you before you try to bless me. Because the scriptures say that the greater blesses. And so he figured, don't come and turn it around. You got it. See, there was a spiritual exchange there. If he went and they would have ended up giving him stuff, they would have been considered the blessed. But Abraham carried an altar. He heard from God. When God wanted to, to mess some things up, he spoke to Abraham first. So every time we raise an altar, that means God has to speak to us. You become a friend of Jesus. You become a friend of God. Continue. Now the king of Sodom said to Abraham, give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord, God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap, and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should say, I have made Abram rich. See, that was a power transfer. Some of you are so easily solicited. You are, in fact, the more blessed one than the people in the world. But you will go and sell your soul for a dollar and have the, the exchange happen. But Abraham understood because he had erected some altars. And so where he was, God was speaking. Don't make that exchange. When you carry this revelation of the altar... And you lift up an altar everywhere you go. As you enter a place, you begin to pray and thank God for how far he has brought you. And God begins to speak to you. And you know in this place, you are heavily and heavenly defended. And so God spoke to him quickly. Don't make that exchange. Otherwise, they will say they are the ones who made you rich. Some of you have sold your power to the world. God was already doing his thing with you. And you went and solicited the advice of the wrong person. And that was already the day that God was going to bless you. He was already going to give you the man. But you let a man interject. 
Because you carry no altar, no revelation. You don't hear from God that today is the hour of your breakthrough. And so you go and visit the doctor and the doctor gives you an IVF shot not knowing that you've been pregnant all along. And you transfer the power to man. You've been healed already. And then you go and transfer the power to God. Continue. Verse 24. Accept only what the young men have eaten and the portion of the men who went with me, Aner, Eshkol, and Mamre. Let them take their portion. He said, let them do what they want to do. But as for me, I'm not. Now I want us to go to Genesis 19. Genesis 19. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Here now, my lords, please, turn in to your servant's house and spend the night, and wash your feet. Then you may rise early and go on your way. And they said, No, but we will spend the night in the open square. But he you see, because Lot had never built any altars, he had never consulted God in the first place. When he finally decided to be spiritual, even the angels was like, no, we're going to go sleep outside. See, when you are so carnal, when God finally speaks to you, people miss it. That's why this vessel is very important that you keep it integral. People must see that you fear God. Because the angels themselves was like, no, we don't want to have nothing to do with you. Continue reading. Verse 3. But he insisted strongly, so they turned into him and entered his house. Then he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Now before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. And they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them carnally. So Lot went out to them through the doorway, shut the door behind him and said, Please, my brethren, do not do so wickedly. Please, my brethren. My brethren. You see, when you don't carry this revelation that I must speak to God, you end up yoking with the wicked. He said, my brethren, instead of rebuking them in the name of the Lord Jesus, he called them my brethren. Continue. See now, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please, let me bring them out to you, and you may do to them as you wish. Only do nothing to these men, since this is the reason they have come under the shadow you of You are willing roof. to sell the goodness, the virgin daughters that have kept themselves. Continue. And they said, stand back. Then they said, this one came in to stay here, and he keeps acting as a judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. So they pressed hard against the man lot and came near to break down the door. But the men reached out their hands and pulled Lot into the house with the them. The mercies of God. Jesus. And shut the door. And they struck the men who were at the doorway of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they became weary trying to find the door. May any spirit that is trying to find you this weekend. That's low. May the angels of the Lord be deployed to strike them blind. Yes, Lord. May you be covered in the blood of Jesus. Jesus. When they are looking for you, may they not know where you are. Yes, Lord. May you be covered this weekend. Continue. Verse 12. Then the men said to Lot, Have you anyone else here? Son-in-law, your sons, your daughters, and whomever you have in the city. Take them out of this place, for we will destroy this place. 
because the outcry against them has grown great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. When you don't carry revelation, you go places where God wants to destroy. But by reason of Abraham, continue. So Lot went out and spoke his sons to his sons-in-law, who had married his daughters, and said, Get up, get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But his sons-in-law seems that they thought he was joking. When you are so carnal, when you live life like it is just a fleshly life, you are putting other people in danger. Now you're trying to tell me if Abraham went and told them this, wouldn't they run immediately because they knew he was a man of the altar, a man that heard from God. See, that is the issue. If you don't stay consistent, when you decide to preach to someone who you know God is calling you to give them the word of the Lord, they miss it. This is why people have blood on their hands. This weekend, you are not here for yourself. You are here to establish an altar so that the people that are attached to you will not perish. Today is not a praying day. Today is an understanding day. You must, you, you are lifting up altars because your mother cannot die right now. The truth of the matter is the people attached to you, you don't have time to mourn at this moment in time of your life. And so we're lifting up altars this whole weekend that for, for my sake, Lord, for your name's sake, Preserve these people who have been appointed to die. Continue. Verse 15. When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he lingered, the men took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of two of his daughters. The Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him outside the city. So it came to pass, when they had brought them outside, that he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you, nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. Then Lot said to them, Please, no, my lords. There go to carnality again. When God is trying to take you out of the situation, take you out of the relationship, take you out of the job. You want to negotiate. Continue. Indeed, now your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have increased your mercy, which you have shown me by saving my life. But I cannot escape to the mountains, lest some evil overtake me and I die. See now, this city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Please let me escape there. Is it not God is trying to send you to a high place where the enemy cannot touch you anymore, where he can no longer come and trouble you, and you decide that, no, I want to stay at the level that I'm at, even when God is trying to pull you out because you are so carnal. He's telling you, I need more from you. I want you to go higher. And you're like, no, I choose to be a gossiper. I choose to fornicate. I choose to stay in this horrible situation of mine. You've delivered me, but I am going to make sure that I enter an equally silly relationship. Continue. Verse 21. And he said to him, See, I have favored you concerning this thing also, in that I will not overthrow this city for which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there. For I cannot do anything until you arrive there. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zor. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah. From the Lord out of the heavens. So he overthrew those cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew on the ground. But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. When you are carnal and your wife is carnal, 
When you are carnal and you as the man who is supposed to be the priest of the house, you've never ever shown your wife that you know how to pray, you know the word of God. And women, we only do what we see. The Bible says that we, well, well, when we get married, our whole being will be for our husbands. So you go and marry a man who doesn't know God. No matter how on fire you are, you will be dimmed. Her husband, all he did was look at his property, count his sheep. So silly her, turned around. Let me count our property that we are about to leave. So when we come back, come back where? Continue. Verse 27. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. Abraham went back to the altar. Then he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain. And he saw, and behold, the smoke of the land which went up like the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow. And he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt. So a man of the altar... Your generation can be preserved because of you. The Lord can hold down your spouse, your child, your family member because of the altar. Because you understand the revelation of the altar. That everywhere I go, I must find communion with God. And so no matter where I am, as long as I call on God, he will answer. And for his sake. He spared Lot. Continue. Verse 30. Then Lot went up out of Zor and dwelt in the mountains. And his two daughters were with him. For he was afraid to dwell in Zor. And he and his two daughters dwelt in a cave. Now the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man on the earth to come in to us, as is the custom of all the earth. Come. Let us make our father drink wine and we will lie with him that we may preserve the lineage of our father. You see, when you don't lift up these altars, when you don't pray, when you don't have a season where you know you are communing with God, when you don't have a place, you don't carry a family altar. Lot never carried a family altar and so his children were now in jeopardy. His two daughters decided, let us have sex with our dad. Let us go and commit incest with our father. And so the first one made her father so drunk that she went and slept with him. And he had no knowledge of it. The second one went and did the same thing. And because he never lifted up an altar, because he never saw what, he saw what Abraham did, but he chose not to do it. Don't choose not to do the right thing. And guess what? His first daughter gave birth to Moab. This was the lineage of the people that resisted the Israelites. When you don't lift up a family altar, your kids go into disarray and they end up worshiping idols. The people of Moab, they, they ended up worshiping an idol that used children as sacrifices. We hear of the Israelites fighting the Moabites time and time and time again. And imagine, their lineage is from Abraham. So when you decide that I don't want to take God seriously, you are not just doing yourself a harm, but generations after generations. These are the people that have resisted Israel. The, the half the Bible is about them resisting Israel. Continue reading. 38. Verse 38. And the younger, she also bore a son and called his name Ben-Ami. 
He is the father of the people of Ammon to this day. The Ammonites. They are the people that fought Israel. So when you do not carry a family altar, you take your children into a place of idolatry. And so now you got to come back to church. And every day you are praying against altars. Because your family, your father never raised the family altar. When did you ever do Bible studies together? When did you ever do prayers together? In the morning, when have you ever heard your father anointing you? Tonight, the goal is to make sure you understand why you are here. If your family never built an altar... This weekend, you are, you are raising altars for the sake of your children's children. If your family never raised altars to combat against the demonic altars of old, this weekend, this is why you're here. Tomorrow morning for deliverance, you are here lifting up an altar that after this day, my children cannot be harassed with that demon that will not allow me to sleep. Continue. Genesis 20, verse 1. And Abraham journeyed from there to the south and dwelt Let's skip with to 2 Kings 3, 27. 2 Kings 3, 27. Then he took his eldest son who would have reigned in his place and offered him as a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was a great indignation against Israel. So they departed from him. And return to their own land. A certain woman of the Girl, wives. This was the story I was telling you about. About the king. He understood in the realms of the spirit. If I can lift up altars. If I can give a sacrifice. If I can do certain things. I would break certain things in my bloodline. And so this king was like. What is the most precious thing in my life? It was his son. Today, we are raising up altars this weekend. We are dedicating our time, our blood, sweat, and tears. Some of us, this is the hour of visitation. This is your last chance. Before your brother dies, you must raise that altar this weekend. Some of you, before your father croaks over, you better lift up an altar. He raised an altar and immediately the battle switched on his behalf. When you don't understand these kind of things, you don't understand why you need power. Today we're praying for power to go through the weekend. We're not praying against any altar today. Tomorrow, the next day, you do that. Today, you're praying that the Lord should give you strength. He should give you stamina. He should give you capacity. Those of you who are waiting upon the Lord for breakthrough, you will not eat. You won't die. You're asking God for deliverance. Something new must happen in your life. Most people think that if you want power, mimic somebody. You go and wear a white suit like Bishop Oyedepo and you carry no altar. The enemy will use you as meat. Don't mimic someone not knowing the altars they have raised. This weekend, God wants to do some new things with some of us. You better, you better accept it. You are a part of the sum. This weekend, you are lifting up an altar in this house. In this house. That even when you invite your family members here, by reason of the altar you have lifted, even if they did not want to accept Christ, even if they did not want to be free, by reason of the revelation of this altar, they must be free. Today, you are praying. And Lord, give me this power also. 
Give me the ability to hear from Zion. Give me the ability to hear you when you speak, when you lift up altars, much like Abraham. He will tell you that I want to go and destroy Gomorrah. And he said that, let me negotiate with you. This weekend, don't take it for granted. That was my only task, to let you know that prayer fest each year, you are raising altars. You are not here in vain. Many years from now, these altars will speak. The same way those demonic altars have been speaking for years. Your children will be able to say, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, my grandfather lifted up some altars. Want us to be on our feet. We are lifting up a prayer altar this weekend. And we're asking that the Holy Ghost establishes these altars for generations to come. We cannot be a people that are so concerned about just us and our jobs and our well-being. We must think transgenerationally. That's what altars do. Today, I want you to begin to thank God for hearing this word first. Yes, Lord. Lift up your voice and begin to thank God. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. 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 Yeah, that's what I'
Yes, Lord. He was like you and I. Elijah understood some things. Tonight we are entering the realm of Elijah. Yes, Lord. The Bible says that he began to decree that it would not rain. Jesus. And it did not rain indeed. We are about to pray for the next 10 to 15 minutes. No prayer point. This weekend, this power that you are getting. Yes, Lord. It's called the decree a thing and it is established. Yes, power. yes Lord. It is not okay to be a man and your children are sick and you have no power. It is not okay to be a woman and your husband is in need of strength and you can't even speak a word. It is not okay to be a teacher and a school shooting happens because there was no altar erected. Tonight, we are raising up altars. This house shall be called the house of prayer. The Bible says that he prayed dimensions of prayers. Yes, Lord. Tonight, I'm about to take my shoes off. Jesus. We're all going in. Yes, yes, Lord. By the time you leave here, you must carry the lionic dimension of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There are days where you can carry the sheep the lamb in him. But today it is the lion dimension. Yes, Lord. Your tongues must change. Yes, Lord. Some of you must prophesy tonight. Yes, Lord. God must give you a gift. Yes, Lord. You must sing in tongues if you have to. Yes, Lord. Say today. Today. My father. My father. As I pray. As I pray. Give me the dimension. Give me the dimension. That Elijah carried. Elijah carried. To decree. To decree. That there would be no rain. No rain. And no rain indeed. No rain indeed. Tonight. As I pray, give me this level of power for this weekend. Lift up your voice and begin to pray.
right yes, now Lord. this weekend you will not hinder this vessel we commit their body to be that that belongs to Jesus Christ we cover this vessel with the blood of Jesus yes, Lord. any physical oppression Jesus. right now yes, right now yes, we command you yes, leave Hands lifted. Any roadblock, any hindrance that will try to block you from your deliverance this weekend. Jesus. Right now, I send fire. 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 Catch fire now! Fire! 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 Hands lifted. Every mental roadblock. Jesus, sir. Everything that will hinder you from pushing. Jesus. Right now, I open your ears to hear that of Zion. Yes, Lord. May you hear the speakings of Zion. Yes, Lord. May you begin to hear that of Zion. Yes, Lord. May you hear nothing else but that from Zion. Yes, Lord. Any spiritual blindness. Jesus. That will hinder you Jesus. from seeing Jesus. what God wants you to see Jesus. this weekend. Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now. I command every spiritual blindness yes, that does not come from God Jesus. to leave. Leave. 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 See the light. Jesus. Receive the light. Jesus. Receive the light. Jesus. Receive light. 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 We render every spirit powerless. Yes, Lord. This weekend you are breaking into the realm. Yes, Lord Jesus. Your tongues will change this weekend. Yes, yes Lord. You will prophesy this weekend. Yes, Lord. You will dream dreams this weekend. Jesus, you will see visions this Jesus, weekend. Lord. This weekend, yes, you will Lord. encounter God. Yes, Lord. Begin to thank God. Most gracious Father, we thank you this evening. Father, we thank you for our prayers. Father, we thank you for the signs of wonders. Father, we thank you for your move. In the name of Jesus, we pray. 
Of Jesus. May this weekend, may the Holy Spirit help you recognize the voice of God. May the Lord visit you this weekend. May you be marked for deliverance this weekend. May every unsettled issue, may they expire this weekend. In the name of Jesus, this weekend may you say and may you experience God in a special way. I mark you for deliverance. I mark you for deliverance. May this weekend, may you enter a spiritual height. May you receive power from on high. May the Lord strengthen your shoulders this weekend. May you speak in new tongues. May you catch new revelation. May you build altars everywhere you go this weekend. May you erect altars. May you erect altars. May you erect altars. May you erect altars. Abba Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name. Thank you for watching The End Time Bride. We pray that you were edified, equipped, and empowered through the word to establish the kingdom of God and of his Christ everywhere that your soles of your feet tread. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to reach every End Time Bride worldwide. Stay blessed.